As part of one of my purchases before the Christmas period, I got a Spectrum DX9 radio. And as part of that, Horizon Hobby were offering a free Horizon Hobby Phase Ultra Small Quadcopter. And I wanted to do a quick little video on this, just to kind of go through it, show you the, um, the main bits and pieces around it, and let you know what I think. Just to show you the size of this thing, I thought it would be worthwhile doing it in comparison. This is a 450 class quadcopter here that you can see the arms for. This is my smallest quadcopter I've been flying to date. This is a Hubsan X4. You can get these in lots of different versions now. This is actually the one um, from Heli Guy. They call it a Viper. It's got a, a guard fitted. This doesn't have to be on it, but you can see it's an awful lot smaller than that. And then we have the phase itself. There it is. Really, really small quadcopter. So let me just move that out of the way so I can kind of show it to you in more detail. Um, fits literally in the palm of your hand. Um, has a small body, very similar to a number of other quads that you've probably seen um, advertised in that the PCB um, pretty much houses everything. And there are lights on the top of the bottom of each of the arms on the ends, four brush motors, uh, 100 milliamp hour lipo battery under the cover that isn't changeable and um, lights also in the middle of the body. It comes in the box we've shown you with a couple of other bits and pieces so let me just move these other bits out of the way. So inside the box obviously you get the phase itself you get the remote control, and we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in a minute or two. Not a massive fan of this. I understand why they've made this such a small thing, but you can see even with my um, medium-sized hands, it's still a bit of a handful. Um, if it was going to be, um, you know, if I had big hands, then this would be really tricky to use. We have uh, the obligatory USB charger now to charge the uh, phase takes about 30 minutes to charge and if you're just gentle hovering you'll get about four minutes 10 seconds out of it is about my average uh, if you're hooting it around you get about three and a half minutes so it isn't a massive amount of flight time and because that battery isn't interchangeable as soon as it's finished it's back on the usb charger and you get a little bag full of bits with a spare canopy and you also get a full set of props as well so now we've talked about the bits and pieces, let's just talk about this controller in a little bit more detail. Um, the thing that Horizon Hobby have really missed out on, I think, with this model is um, any kind of DSM to DSMX compatibility so that it can be bound to a spectrum transmitter. I've got other Horizon Hobby products that do that and it means you can actually use a proper remote control um, rather than something like this. Um, this isn't bad um, but it isn't great. The thing that really frustrates me about this apart from it being really small is the springs on the controls are really quite tight so that it bounces back with a hell of a flick and when you're using it what you tend to find is that it's very difficult to yaw without affecting the throttle because of the resistance that you find from the springs and similarly over here by the time you've overcome the resistance of the spring you're um, you're moving quite a pace on and off button at the bottom and trim tabs just for elevator and aileron, no trim tabs for rudder. But interestingly, uh, this thing must calibrate its accelerometers and gyros when you power it up every time because I haven't had any problems with drift yet. The way this thing works, it's quite straightforward. Um, first of all, you power on the model. You have that wonderful um, disco effect lights and then to bind to it you turn on the transmitter you put the throttle to the top then back to the bottom and it binds and when all the lights go solid you're good to go and there you are, I've got the red lights at the back blue at the front and white in the middle at night you tend to find that the white lights actually overpower the blue so although it's really good for orientation and again you've got the lights at the bottom as well um, it tends to uh, not be as clear as it could be now to show you how to actually control this thing, um, obviously if I put the bottle up now you'll have um, a little bit of control. Um, to change from uh, the rate, there's low, medium and high rate, at the moment it kicks off in low. If I press this stick in once, those two beeps means it's medium. If I press it again, those three beeps mean I'm in high rate. If I press it one more time, 
back in low rates. And low rates um, are reasonable for moving around in. High rates, it is very twitchy indeed, and you can get some real speeds up. On the right hand side, if you press that stick in, then if you move it left or right, then it will actually do a flip in that direction. So that's how you use the remote control. So let me just show you a quick video of it here hovering around. Uh, very easy to control, quite a stable little machine. Didn't require too much trimming to get it to hover this well. Um, but I would you know, say that it's, it's not as easy to fly as some of the others and that's mainly due to the transmitter being very stiff and the flight time only being three and a half minutes. So in conclusion, what do I think? Well, I like it. I would probably be a little bit frustrated if I spent a lot of my own money to get it. I think the lack of any DSM or DSM, uh, DSMX um, compatibility with uh, Spectrum radios is, is a big thing that's missing. That would have been the killer app for me with this and I'm surprised that Horizon Hobby haven't done the, the bits and pieces to add that on. I think this is because it's so similar with a lot of the electronics to other products that are out there. This is their version of it rather than one they've designed from scratch. Uh, the three and a half minute flight times for me, uh, that isn't long enough to really um, get your teeth into it. If you're practicing and learning to fly, I'd recommend that you probably need a little bit more battery life from that because um, to do things like learn nose in and other bits and pieces um, you know you want to be hovering for four or five minutes like that at a time to train those thumbs and the fact that you can't change the lipo on it is disappointing too because it means that after that three and a half minutes you have to wait another half an hour before you can fly again i've tried to take the transmitter apart to make these sticks a little less um, stiff unfortunately you can't the um, bits and pieces at the back are um, it's all sealed you can get into the transmitter and get to the gimbals themselves but they're not gimbals like you'd expect to see in a real transmitter which is no shock there this is built to a price um, but there's no way to kind of ease it up that i found if anyone finds one and can like and let me know how to do it that would be fantastic so i think if you're looking for a cheap and cheerful present or a toy for yourself to have a little play around with you know what this is quite good fun if you're looking for a first quadcopter to learn on so that your crashes don't cost you a fortune on your way to flying a real model then personally i would go with a hubsan x4 and a proper size transmitter so hopefully that's interesting for those of you who are looking and thinking about the model please like subscribe and as always happy flying